All right, let's talk about Patrick Queen, a very fascinating player. So what you see on the screen already, before we even get into the tape or anything like that, are his PFF grades from the you know last three years. So every year he's been in the league, and you see that according to PFF, he was an absolute disaster year one, and I agreed. When I watched his tape, I thought it was really rough uh, in year one. Amazingly, uh, despite the fact that he got a sub-30 PFF grade, someone gave him a vote for Defensive Rookie of the Year that year because, you know, uh, the voters are weird, don't know how that happened at all. Again, he showed the occasional flash play, but really struggled with consistency in year one. But you've seen steady improvement movements year two and then year three I mean year two he looked like at least an NFL player although still below average but uh, you know uh, started to look competent in certain areas, uh, and then last year, he actually had a good grade, like a 69.7 grade. That's solid. That's a pretty solid contributor right there. The biggest jump we've seen is that, you know, his run defense year in and year out has gotten better, but in 2021, it was already competent, and in 2022, it went to above average. The real jump is he went from a uh, bad coverage linebacker to a above average one 65.5 grade coverage wise it's nothing to write home about but as long as you can just be solid in coverage queen does so many other kind of exciting things that that's all he really needs to do you see his pass rush grades actually always been good from pff's perspective so okay looks like he's on the right track but i think it's also important to go to this next chart this is his draft profile from PFF. So this, these are going to be his grades the last three years that he was in college. And you see that it was, again, a grade above 70. That's a good college player, but that is not a good grade for someone who's getting drafted in the first round. Typically, you know, certain positions, uh, PFF grade does better than other, like in terms of uh, predicting future success. Linebacker is not a perfect one, but typically it says you want to get a grade over 90 to be successful at the next level, uh, although if you have it below 90, then it kind of doesn't really matter whether it's an 85 or a 75. Uh, that's typically how that tends to work, but still, uh, it's well below 90. I mean, there's no debate as to whether or not he was a 90-plus player or not, which to me is actually a good thing, and here's why. If he was supposed to be a very polished player coming out of college, and then he came in and struggled, but then had one good year, I would kind of say, I'm not sure if he actually got better, I'd be more likely to believe that maybe you just had a fluky good year. But the fact that he was kind of a raw linebacker coming out of college, and now he's slowly had some better and better years, to me says that he is a raw player, but he's figuring out how to get better, and it's actually exciting, I think, if you're a Ravens fan. This play is a good example, a good, good example of several things, uh, not just Patrick Queen, but also just how important the overall uh, run defense for a team, you know, is how much of a team sport run defense is, uh, you're going to see, because the it's actually supposed to be the left guard who's going to go out and try and block Queen. However, you see that an interior defensive lineman kind of blows that up a little bit. He had to run over to help, uh, you know, out in that department, meaning that Queen is now completely unblocked. So, okay, good situation. Your teammates helped you out. It's a team sport at the end of the day, especially run defense. Everyone has to do their job. But for Queen, all you've done now by getting that break is get yourself in position to where you could make a play. You still have to find a way to go make the play. But as you see, that's exactly what he does. He runs over. He does make that quick tackle, and they're able to, you know, uh, get a stop for no gain. These are the kind of things we see him do. When he gets freed up to make stuff happen, he makes stuff happen. And this is what he's honestly been able to do his entire career, I would say, is he's able to go over and make stuff happen. Like, this play is another example of he's going to be unblocked right here, and when he has room, he looks like a first-round draft pick. It's going to be a run to the right side of the screen, and again, I can't tell exactly on this play. Again, you know, all this stuff is always hard. I'm not in the huddle. I can't say exactly what the play concept is. I don't want to call out the wrong guy for not blocking Queen, but... You know, someone's not going to block him here. Maybe it was by design because it is going to be a run away from him. So that is something you do sometimes is leave the linebacker uh, who's on the opposite side of the field unblocked. Although given that the edge rusher on that side of the field is also going to be unblocked on this play, I don't think that's what was supposed to happen here. But regardless, watch what Queen does. Watch him just completely charge in. He's able to get over and help make that play. He moves so quickly, and when he has a lane, he really runs through it. Uh, so this is the kind of thing that you definitely like to see from Patrick Queen. 
and stuff like this too. To me, this is actually the more exciting play because that stuff, the reality is we had seen that in previous years. We had seen him have these flashes of looking like the first round pick we all thought he could be. He just didn't do it consistently enough. But on this play, it's going to be the right tackle who's going to eventually block him one-on-one. -on -one. But this is him starting, I think, really understand the position at the NFL level. Right when this play begins, the tackle is moving up to try and block Queen. But this is what's really fascinating is Queen knows where the ball carrier is. The ball carrier is currently towards the right of Queen. So while he could engage in the contact and he looks like he's about to, he kind of realizes last second, wait, I don't have to do this. I can just step to the side. That's exactly what he does. And he ends up being able to move over and make this tackle. These are the types of plays you like to see. You like to see him kind of reading plays more frequently. When someone goes up to block him, he doesn't just get blocked, but he finds ways to come in and make the play. Like something like this is another example. This is going to be a coverage play here, but it's going to be a bit more interesting than that because first, okay, you see where he is on the screen. Right when this play begins, you're going to see that he, again, in check down duty right here, right? Cover the guy in the check down. Uh, it's not the you know most flashy play in the world, but it is important. You don't want to give up free yards if you can help it. So that's what he's doing. However, the Carolina Panthers quarterback on this play is reading it and is going to try and see if he can scramble. Okay, makes some sense, right? Nothing's open. Let's try to use your legs to get the ball down the field. But this is where Patrick Queen's awareness, which was a massive issue early on in his career, is starting to become a strength. Watch as you see, he is going to be able to move over and he is able to, you know, not give up too many yards. It's a four yard run but on third down and it had to get about 10 on that play. That's a great play. And these are the kind of things that Queen is starting to become more and more capable of doing for Baltimore. So, and especially with, I think, the addition of Roquan Smith and kind of the way that the Ravens like to use uh, Patrick Queen uh, in Roquan Smith now, it really, I think, is a, a great thing to see. And I think that he is becoming a much better player. And I should mention, the numbers were already getting better. Uh, again, if you like PFF grades, which you know I do, uh, those were already getting better before Roquan even came along. So I don't think it's necessarily correlated, but obviously it's got to help to have Roquan next to you. As for Patrick Queen and what he brings to the table, uh, you know, again, who can say for sure how he's going to continue to grow? You see him get better year after year after year. Doesn't mean it's going to continue going this way until he's the best player to ever live, right? There is going to eventually be a ceiling, but I don't think he's hit his ceiling yet. I really don't. I think he's starting to now figure out the fundamentals and the basics, and that stuff's really important. Again, a lot of linebackers, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting position. I've compared it to baseball a lot in terms of, like, you have some guys who are contact hitters and then some guys who are home run hitters and then the occasional guys who can do all three. Uh, you know, there's the the guys who I would say Queen was this way early on in his career, who was the guy who would go up to the plate trying to hit a home run every play, uh, but wouldn't hit the ball in play very often and maybe hit uh, some home runs, but that's kind of all he could do, hit under 200, uh, but is now becoming the guy who, hey, he draws some walks now, he puts the ball in play now, gets some singles, but can still hit those occasional home runs. And the hope is that if that contact continues to get better, he can eventually become the guy who can, you know, still hit 30 home runs, but also hit over 300 kind of thing. Who knows if he'll hit become that guy, but he's on the right path, even if it's been a little bit slower than maybe you would have liked. But yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always, I'm hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.